And uh, ladies and gentlemen, do not go anywhere because we have uh, another blockbuster session coming right up. So I'm going to welcome back to the stage uh, my colleague Christopher Ludwig, uh, who's going to run us through this next uh, important panel discussion. Christopher, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay. It's on? No, it is it. Okay, there we go. Great. I usually speak loud enough anyway. Uh, thanks, everyone, for sticking through. I think um, that session absolutely set us up perfectly for, for, our next, uh, for our next discussion beyond transaction, creating win-win partnerships for a competitive supply chain. I don't have to probably overstate it, but the more change we face in the supply chain, whether that's the kind of disruptions we've seen, whether it's the nearshoring investments that are coming, whether it's the transition to EV, or whether it's just the absolute uncertainty ahead, um, the importance of working closely together uh, in the supply chain uh, at virtually every point, cross-departmentally, uh, as well as with providers, whether that's OEMs and manufacturers sharing forecasts and, and information and plans as early as possible, uh, or whether it's intelligence and, and, and you know, insight on the ground uh, from logistics providers, uh, it's all extremely valuable. And in this session, we want to explore more about how to build and maintain those relationships beyond transactions, beyond just what's in the contract, uh, to really build the relationships that will define the Mexican automotive supply chain in this time of great disruption. Uh, we have a panel together which very well represents different perspectives uh, of this model. Uh, I'm going to introduce them and you know, we'll go through some topics. And again, very, very happy to take comments and questions from the audience. So do at any point, put up your hand and we'll, we will get to you. Um, but I'm happy to introduce our first panelist who has worked more than 30 years for General Motors in a variety of supply chain management procurement roles of increasing seniority and today is driving procurement, supply chain and logistics strategy across GM de Mexico, responsible for the company's entire purchasing budget here in the country. Very, very pleased to welcome Monica Garcia. Thank you, Monica. Gracias. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a seat. Have a seat here. Yep. Next up, joining us, um, someone who's been present at this event for some years before. Very pleased to welcome him on the stage uh, with me for the first time. I joined Nissan in 2012, has had various leadership positions, uh, including across inbound, outbound, packaging engineering, export, uh, and, and after sales. Today, he's leading parts logistics uh, for Nissan uh, across Mexico a role he inherited last year. Very pleased that Diane Leon is with us here today. Diane. <laughs> and I hear, I hear some fans in the audience there. That's, that's good, to, good to hear. <laughs> Uh, next up has over 35 years experience um, in, in, in logistics across the US and, and Mexico, more than 20 years in rail and intermodal, uh, later commercial director of some, some very large 3PLs. Today, she's chief commercial officer uh, for Jack Cooper, Mexico, and not planned, but perfectly matching Monica on stage, Julie, uh, Julie Luna from Jack Cooper. Julie. Very nice. Thanks Thank very you, much. Sir. Great to have Julie. you. And then, uh, also joining us, worked across a variety of roles in companies across freight uh, and vehicle logistics. Joined Penske in, in 2019, leading operations for several major uh, customers, and today, director of operations for the freight management business unit at Penske. Uh, very pleased that Eric uh, Reynoso is with us now. Eric. Great to have you, Eric. Thank you. So a mix again of uh, OEMs, roles in purchasing logistics, uh, inbound, vehicle, uh, inbound logistics, service parts logistics, vehicle logistics, some of them partners together as well. So I think a good, a good mix. Um, I want to just start kind of setting the scene a little bit, uh, Monica, turning to you as you're overseeing you know, GM's purchasing here in, in Mexico. Uh, can you give us a kind of sense of your top priorities as you look to the next year ahead? You know, what would you sort of put in your in your top three, because I suspect we might, we can go from there in terms of talking about what also drives partnerships uh, for you in the supply chain. Yeah, we have um, a lot of priorities for, for this year and, and, and next year. Uh, in line with our vision of uh, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestions, we as GN want to um, strengthen our product portfolio uh, through our four brands. 
Uh, we have presence in, in, in ICE vehicles and electric vehicles. In fact, uh, we introduced uh, three electric vehicles this, this year, uh, the, the Blazer EV, the Equinox, Equinox EV, that are uh, assembled in, in our Ramos Arispe plan in, in Coahuila and, and Homer EV. Uh, we also want to ensure that, that our uh, plants in Mexico uh, continue to be leading in, in manufacturing. So uh, it, to achieve that, we are uh, working to build a resilient supply chain and also security capacity, logistic capacity, because uh, we want not only to build the vehicles, but to ensure that we can deliver those vehicles to, to our customers in an efficient way. Uh, we also want to continue to strengthen uh, the, the business uh, relationship we have with our suppliers through open communication and, 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 and transparency in the way we do business. And um, last but not least is uh, we want to achieve our vision of uh, zero emissions. And we want our partners and suppliers to get engaged uh, to find uh, new ways, uh, to sustainable ways to, to achieve this uh, future that is, well, really not a future, is <laughs> now here. Yeah. Yeah. Those are basically the, the, the top priorities we have. Yeah, and I, I wanted to start there just because I think that, that you know, understanding the strategic priorities of your customers, for sure, is an important way of defining uh, how you work closely with them as we go the other way around. But uh, Diane, are things that you would add from a Nissan point of view in your role, uh, what, what are you setting as some of your key priorities over the next year? Well, the same, there's a lot. But specifically talking about partnership, as long-term partnership, uh, those relationships where we can rely each other, uh, that we can trust each other, and we can build each other. Uh, the nurturing topic, it is a responsibility together. Mm -hmm. So we need to take an eye in everything and look for, uh, look for that. Uh, the second priority is to provide visibility together. We need to know, well, we, we don't know what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. but when it's happened, we need to be aware mm -hmm. everybody, not only the, the, the logistics side, the supply chain completely. So I think that's a second priority. And the third one is an unstable supply mm -hmm. together. Once again, together we can create that uh, stable supply, looking for the right buffers when we, when we need to have it, looking to streamline or, line or lean the operations in the other side. But the stable supply is what we are looking right now. Excellent. So again, a good picture there between uh, strategic shifts that are happening, as Monica described, you know, in, in, in building EV, reaching for sustainability, and then the resilient topic, as you alluded to, which obviously clearly in terms of the stable supply chain, which we want to build together. Um, from the service provider side, partly in reflecting on what you've heard from, from customers or potential customers, uh, what, what are you setting out as your priorities for Jack Cooper, Julie, starting with you, and how that connects to this topic of partnership as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, at Jack Cooper, Mexico, you know, we're finished vehicle logistics, yeah. so we're at the tail, tail, tail end of this <laughs> supply chain. So it's very important for us that we remain adaptable, you know, whether it's a change in the competitive landscape or a real car supply, whatever the case may be. We're also expanding services, you know, you know, in the U.S. we are a very big car haul carrier, Madrina company, mm -hmm. and so we are launching that service in Mexico in 2025, and then looking very hard at what I would term as new solutions for old problems, <laughs> you know, and the Mexicali uh, option as a railhead will come alive in 2025 as well and provide good savings opportunities for OEMs, and so we're very excited to focus on those, those priorities. Absolutely. Yeah, good, good reflections as well. I think I'm matching some of the priorities you heard from the OEMs as well. Eric. In, in our case, Christopher, thank you very much. Um, we recently redefined our, our pillars in the company. So we, we select three different pillars, and, and I guess these pillars are really doing a match with these uh, priorities. The first one is to understand what are the needs of the customers or the partners, the business partners that we have in order to have the right services uh, in our portfolio or add new services to our portfolio to, to, to solve the new problems that they are facing right now. The second one is to have the best team. In our case, the biggest asset in our companies is the people. Yeah. So we are investing a lot of it to have the best team with training, with motivation, you know, and assuring 100% of, of the replacements are coming from our, our, our own team. Mm -hmm. you know? 
And the third one, it, it, it's, and I believe it's the most important thing, is the information. You know, we are developing new tools to get information for the customer, for the system for the customer, the system that we have, the system that are using our customer, that all belong to them, to put all together in the same platform and to share information, to get information on time, in real time, available for all the customers, to, to, to uh, help them to take the better decision in the, in the right moment. You know? mm -hmm. I think that's the three priorities that we're following right now. Thank you, excellent. Um, we've heard this, I think, actually from several of our, of our panelists already, um, Monica, in terms of nearshoring that we see happening in, in Mexico. Um, and, and you obviously, with, with launching EV production and building up your supply base more, there's obviously relevance there. Um, how do you see that as a topic uh, in terms of how you're working with your partners, in terms of you know, building that resilience that you perhaps alluded to? Um, uh, and which areas do you think are most important to develop further? Yeah, of course, uh, nearshoring is, is really important, and, and GM has been working for uh, more than uh, over a day to locate our suppliers uh, uh, closer to our business, uh, to our uh, manufacturing plants. And this has been a strategy that has succeeded in developing the, the supply base in, in, in Mexico reducing the, the risk and the complexity of, uh, of logistics. And uh, just to give you some, some numbers, um, in um, over 10 years, we have uh, triplicated the, the purchase, mm -hmm. the annual purchase value uh, 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 here in Mexico. This year, we are buying around $28 billion from more than 650 tier one suppliers wow. in, 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 in Mexico. Uh, so, this uh, new shoring or localization that is n not new for, for, for GM, and, and we have been working on this for a long time, and there is a strategy that we are going to continue work to, to build a resilient North America supply chain. And we know that uh, this growth requires investment from both mm -hmm. public and, and private uh, sectors, and, and I, I think we almost work together if we really want to capitalize this, this, this opportunity here in Mexico. In terms of areas of opportunity, of course, there are several here, here in Mexico, and some of them were mentioned yesterday mm -hmm. in, the, in the panel regarding energy, infrastructure, capacities, and so on. But uh, uh, in regards of suppliers, I think that suppliers need to invest in innovation and new technologies um, uh, to implement a safety uh, at features in, in their uh, equipment. Um, also, uh, they need to apply the lessons learned to ensure or to secure the quality of our products. Uh, and uh, more importantly, uh, a good planning demand. Yes. That's really, mm -hmm. really important. Uh, and to invest according to, to that. Just to mention some of them. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, it kind of goes without saying that with that budget, 650 tier ones, 28 billion, um, it requires a lot of logistic support of to course. to make that to make that happen. I'm sure that's actually suppliers that are supplying beyond Mexico too. So obviously, it's a it's an important link there across. Uh, Diane, in terms of the localization or nearshoring and and what it means for how you're working in inbound logistics with your partners, um, how is it changing or is it changing the relationship or your approach with uh, with your logistics providers? I know it's, again, as Marcia, it's not Monica said, it's not new. It's not, but but it's clearly we see acceleration here. So how is it changing it? Well, as, as, as Monica said, uh, we, we were working this every day since forever that mm. we try to, to bring closer our suppliers. Uh, also, we are now looking not only the tier one, we need to take a look over the tier two, tier three, because there are very complex supply chains there. So there's an advantage if we can push together for the nearshoring to also bring all those tier two, three to a better supply chain. Uh, so. In terms of, of working with our partners, uh, once again, we are looking for stable supply. So when, when we are talking about the nearshoring and there is a volume increase, uh, I think together we need to design or redesign the networks that we have in order that we can get the maximum advantage of the infrastructure that we have. There was a lot of uh, conversation about the infrastructure, so we need to, to get the 100% or 120% of the infrastructure that we have, but together, mm -hmm. uh, bringing the experts, the team. I think the team is, a, is the fundamental thing, very expert uh, team that we have, uh, and they are sharing ideas with our, our partners, 
in order that we can co-create new solutions and be flexible. Uh, we need to have those buffers already there. Uh, maybe we don't know what's going to happen, but we already are thinking that we need to be prepared for that and to have our tools already there in order to, to start working as soon as possible. So I think this is what, what we are trying to do for near sharing. Absolutely. Eric, you, you, you mentioned strengthening the team. Uh, you mentioned a lot about technology as well mm -hmm. as, as a clear. Um, do you see also other uh, asset-based investments or let's say other kinds of investments that this is also driving uh, for you and your partners to, to, to help? You know, well, yeah, we are focused on our, our efforts in, in the systems and, and the people, but of course we are, we're helping our, our partners in the, um, in the transportation part, you know, because um, we know that there, there's a lot of issues there. You know? so in our case, in the case that we have with GM, we have 21 years working with GM in Mexico, and we handle all the, all the transportation for them. It's around uh, 12,000 or 13,000 loads per week, so mm -hmm. it's insane. Mm -hmm. So we have around 120 different carriers, family carriers, just mm -hmm. for this customer. And uh, we implemented, several years ago, we implemented a process to certify every single carrier that works with our customer to assure the process, the training, the facilities, the equipment. And the idea is to have the first options with all the, quali the, the quality that the customer needs. But of course, develop the second choice, the second option, the third option. If the first option failed, have available, you no, know, with a reasonable time and a reasonable price, yeah. a second choice, a third choice, inside of the same family carrier. So we're, we're supporting our customers in that. Also, with, with the in, in incorporating our technology, you know, to communicate everything to, to our customers, everything to their carriers, and, and create an, a, a kind of bubble, you know, yeah. to, to share information from both sides. So we're supporting that. And, and Julie, I mean, you, you, as you indicated in the first sense, you're putting assets on the ground here as well. I mean, entering the car carrier market is quite a big, big step too. I mean, it's had more than 100 years in, in the U.S. doing it. Um, so clearly you see this is the right time in, in Mexico to, to take that step. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it hasn't been easy, certainly. There's a lot of uh, rules and regulations <laughs> around it. Uh, it's certainly taken longer than we hoped, uh, but we have managed to get uh, assets in country and have more stage to come south, which is, which is very exciting. Mm. But I think from a, like a nearshoring mm. perspective, um, you know, the landscape has changed so much from a manufacturer perspective in Mexico. You know, you have a lot, a lot more competitors out there mm. for the same space. And I think from a, a service provider perspective, it's important to listen to the customers, understand what their pain points are, and then look for, for new solutions. You know, the ports have been a, an, a, always been you know, a challenge, but in the last probably 18, 24 months, it's been much more so. So looking for new solutions and mm. trying to really listen, listen to the customers and bring, bring things forward that can help them you know, save time, money, and get, get to market faster. Yeah. Diane, that, that, that sort of builds a little bit on what you, you were mentioning in terms of re-engineering your, your footprint and to take, to take more advantage uh, of that. Um, you know, how are you doing that together with your partners? Are you kind of inviting them into that, into that process, if you like, to reinvent um, areas of your network? Mm. Uh, uh, the first thing that we are doing is, as I said, Nissan has been working with long-term partnerships since many years. So I think now we are having these benefits that we have a lot of trust, we have mm -hmm. a lot of transparency in what we are seeing. Uh, the teams are open, so the, the conversation are, are very uh, organic when we are trying to, to solve an, uh, a problem. Uh, there is the trust that everybody can put something on the table and we can discuss and rebuild from that. And as well, we dare to test, fail, and learn, mm -hmm. and try once again. I mean, mm -hmm. running the PDCA, uh, I think there is uh, something that we have very good right now with our partnerships, with our strategic partnerships in, in, the, uh, in the session before. Uh, they mentioned a little bit about uh, strategic partnership. So we need to have that, and we already have that. So those co-creations that we are doing from the 360 degrees view, <clears throat> It's very good because you, 
cannot only have the transportation, you need to have the customs, you need to have the port, you need to have everybody mm -hmm. looking for a solution, and there's, the teams are brilliant. So they start creating something very new that seems like, okay, everybody we are, uh, agree on that. So that's what we mm -hmm. are doing right now creating together. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a good point. And Monica, you also said one of the priorities you know, for, with providers would be that, in, or to recommend to invest in innovation and focus on innovation. As you mentioned, Diane, they, it needs some space to fail as well. So uh, to, to innovate needs trial. So I mean, are there, are, there, are there ways that you're setting up proofs of concepts, working with providers to give them the space, obviously in a safe way that doesn't shut down your plant or your yard operations, um, to, to try new things? And maybe I'll come to you first on that, Monica. Yeah, well, we always work in, uh, in a long-term uh, relationship with uh, our suppliers. Uh, that's why uh, we go beyond the, the word uh, vendor. We really value and appreciate the, 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 the collaboration and the partnership with, uh, with our suppliers in a win-win scheme to design, build, and, and sell the world's best uh, vehicles. And we have been working in, in several um, areas of opportunity with uh, our suppliers, establish, uh, establishing this long-term relationship uh, to enable this kind of investment from the suppliers. We are eager to explore new ways of working together, and also we are open to, to, to listen from our uh, business partner uh, new opportunities and new ways of uh, work uh, in, in this business environment. Mm -hmm. And, and Eric, I mean, is, in terms of the new t tools and technology and innovation, is that, again, is there, uh, whether with your partners or with your carrier partners, or so you're the customers, your carrier partners, are you creating the space to try, to try these new things? Yeah, let me go, go deeper to the, to the idea that we have. We, we developed this new platform that we call in Supply Chain Site, mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's a platform that, that can get information from our partners, I mean, all the data that they have, you know, production, forecast, everything that they have. And we can combine that information with the system that we have, you know, the track and trace, the, the transportation management, even the warehousing. And also we can add information for other, other, other providers that are working in the same network. You know, if there are other companies providing other services, we can add it in the same platform. The idea to have, to have this uh, tool is to, to have all the information in the same place, you know, create dashboards to show what's going on in the real time in the operation, and full access to the customers and to the, uh, especially the partners to take decisions, to, 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 to analyze the information and take decisions in real time, you know? Because sometimes we plan it for, for in advance for 10 weeks or, no, I don't know, for many times. Mm. But the changes are every single day, you know? We have problems with suppliers, we have problems with the, with the ports, with the network, whatever. So we need to resize every single day in the network. If we have that information online, you know, available for everybody, we can take decisions that they can save money, they can, they can save any line stop or whatever disruption in the operation. And, and at the end, that's the goal. No? The mm -hmm. goal is to continue producing, to continue having the product on, in the real time. So that's, that's our, our, mm -hmm. our collaboration in this. Absolutely. Uh, Monica, you mentioned in, you know, in, in scaling up supply chain further. Uh, it obviously requires private and public um, investment and, and, and partnership. Uh, when you do look to, and we had the session yesterday, of course, with kind of focusing on different areas of government policy that could support, what, what would some of the priority areas be kind of more on the public side, on the government side, be, the, be they policies or investment that, that you think would, would really help the supply chain for GM in Mexico to meet those goals that you've set? Yeah, th there are some concerns to maximize the nearshoring trend, mm -hmm. and just to name some of them are energy, a more stable and, and reliable um, energy is uh, imperative, uh, additional investment on uh, distribution, generation, and, trans and transmission of energy are needed here, here, here in the in the country, um, in security, we need to have more uh, robust, uh, safe, and well-maintained uh, uh, public uh, uh, roads and, and highways. Um, vandalism and theft have affected the, uh, the, the supply chain, uh, both by road and by rail. 
um, and that is impacting the delivery times to our customers and, and, and uh, generating losses of millions of, of dollars. So we need to, to have that security and certainty uh, here to uh, transit our vehicles and our inbound uh, ma material, of course, infrastructure on the roads and highways in, in, in the in the ports and 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 well, uh, that's some of the the, mm -hmm. the key areas and and we have had several meetings with uh, the, the the this the, the past administration and with this administration and we are working and we need to collaborate uh, further to improve this mm. this situation here because that that's really really important yeah and that is the 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 key focus if we really want to maximize and capitalize that opportunity that we are here in front of us yeah absolutely and i that that are perfectly complements what we, we heard yesterday from Lizette to um, uh, Toyota as well. Um, Julie, obviously in a, in, a, in a more focused way, you alluded to this before, just bringing uh, Madrinas and building up a network here in Mexico, there's a lot of policy and regulations you need to navigate. There's also other questions on, on let's say, wider, wider uh, rules that would, may or may not come into force. As, as someone who's building up a business or new areas of a business here in Mexico, I mean, what are some of the policy areas you'd be focused on or would like to see, maybe simplified or streamlined or, or anything that would help you think um, your business further here? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the political uncertainty right now is going to be very interesting for the next four years, perhaps. <laughs> um, more. And yeah, or more. <laughs> and certainly, we were talking earlier about the challenges of bringing assets into the country. I mean, it, mm. it is a very laborious um, process. I don't know that we're going to change any of that policy from our perspective as a, as a car haul or madrina provider. But I do think the more the two governments, um, you know, the USMCA, all the, uh, you know, pending changes, mm. if there are any, I think the more transparent they can be, the more it's going to help us, you know, yeah. be, a, be a good service provider and, and get ahead of it. Because it just, all, all, the, uh, all the process takes a long time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to raise the t switching back maybe more into the um, operations side of, of, of logistics. And again, Diane, you referred to changing the network to you know meet, uh, to reflect the changes in the supply chain. We talk about long-term partnership at the same time as we talk about kind of maximum flexibility in, in some areas. And you sometimes think, are these two things uh, working together, or are they contradictory? Because um, you want stability, but you have to be ready for change. And I wonder how you work with your partners in that way. How do you kind of set the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of set the, the foundation mm -hmm. for, for that flexibility, even whilst providing some long-term stability um, uh, in the way you work together? How do you, how do you balance those things? Mm. It's a, a good question. Uh, because uncertainty, nobody wants uncertainty, but we, we'll leave it the logistics. So <laughs> uncertainty is our daily base. So I think when, when, when you have this good relationship, and, and this is what really means a strategic partnership, is to be, um, I would say, to dare or to be uh, capable to work with that uncertainty. So for sure, you, you need to have a long-term relationship where you are uh, looking for a volume, looking for a specification, but as well, as you trust with your partnership. And in, in the case of Nissan, by example, we, we do regionals now across our North America, Mexico, uh, uh, negotiations or specifications. So what, what we are looking is, okay, we, we, we don't know what is gonna happen, but we know that this is what we need to be looking. And whatever happened, we both need to be able to, to be flexible mm -hmm. To, we know that we, we will have challenges together, so we, we put it from the beginning on the table mm. in order that when it happens, we have the option one, the option two, or the option B, and we just need to take it. Mm. And, and as the final goal is our customers, uh, I think we, we dare to do that. And we are able to have this uncertainty, but we accept it, we embrace it. Mm. So this is how, how we are looking and a stable a foundation, but also look how we need to move along the peaks and, and the valleys. So there's, a, there's a certain amount of like, almost like a 
capacity bandwidth in a way we need to be able to flex up or down, yeah. mm -hmm. recognizing that. Um, Eric, just because you also you raised the point on all that information flow and being able to see sort of more, I guess. I mean, how does, does that feed into the way um, you work flexibly with your partners? Yeah, Hopefully of course. anticipating what might... Of course, in, in one hand, we want to have long-term uh, contracts, no? of course, because yeah. if you remove that, that item of time in your mind, you can, you can focus all your creativity to improve your services, services to bring more innovation, and to improve everything. But in the other hand, you, you have to give something to your partners, no? In, in our case, um, just to give an example, uh, we, have a, we have a scheme that if, if the customer uh, have a, a long period of, 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 stop, of, of, of shoot down by, in their plans, we immediately apply a kind of discount, no? We reduce our rates only, only to cover our, our assets, I mean, our people, no? Or our, the, the, the basic uh, costs that we have. But we, we offer that. So it's, it's a combination of that, no? We, in some, we, we demand the long-term periods of, of a contract, but on the other hand, we need to give something there. So that's a flexibility that we are, we are handling. Mm -hmm. you know? Marco, how, how, from your side, again, this uh, focus on long-term partnership, but, but maximizing or giving the space for flexibility as well. How does that play into from a purchasing point of view uh, and how, how you look holistically at, at your partners? Yeah. One of the biggest lessons learned um, we have from um, from past uh, crisis and logistic challenges is the, the need to go deeper into our uh, value chain. Mm -hmm. We have always worked closely with uh, our tier one suppliers, uh, but today we need to uh, extend uh, that uh, that partnership even 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 further. Uh, we always uh, value the, the long-term relationship uh, with our uh, business partner. That that's really really important uh, for for us. And well, uh, basically, uh, we are uh, working to, together, and, and we want to maximize that that uh, collaboration. And this these challenges has uh, driven GN to pursue uh, deeper collaboration and, and long-term strategic partnership with some of our our suppliers. So that is really really important uh, for us. So we we uh, learn where to be uh, lean and where to be robust in mm. in our in our supply chain. So uh, I think that by providing this uh, long-term. Uh, uh, relationship uh, to our suppliers, we provide certainty and continuity on, on the relationship and they can invest wherever they need or whatever they need to invest. And, and, and we are open also to, to, to have that, that flexibility. So we can, we can be flexible. What is important in this kind of partnership and relationship is to have this kind of open communication. Mm. That's really, really important. We need to communicate on time and, 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 and we need to raise a hand when there is an issue because together we can solve that, that issues. And not to wait until the, there is a, a crisis uh, to, to react, and, and that's basically that we are uh, trying to have in this uh, long-term partnership and, and long-term relationship with our suppliers. Uh, Julie, and we've spoken about this previously. Um, you know, we talk about long-term partnerships. Jack was one of the few companies that can probably cite over 100-year-old <laughs> you know, relationships. So clearly, that that has is fundamental to the business. But as you come into new spaces. In, in Mexico, uh, how is that changing? I mean, did you see it similarly in terms of the information sharing? Are there other aspects that need to feed, feed, in, feed, in, feed into this long-term partnership perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jack Cooper's been in Mexico for 26 years, um, but I think the last, again, 18, 24 months mm -hmm. with the rail car shortage, the Madrina car hall shortage, it really, I felt anyway, um, made the customer much more open to solutions that we may have talked about in the past, but they're not the natural solution. But when the natural one's no longer available, it, it really, everybody's willing to talk about, you know, doing cross-border with finished vehicles going north and, and mm. solutions that before really wouldn't have been yeah. on the table. So I think we've really seen, from a customer perspective, I don't know, Eric, if you're seeing this as well, that the more challenges there are, the more open the manufacturers are to listening to different solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if there's any comments or questions from the audience, do feel free to put, put your hand up. We'll, we'll, we'll gladly get you involved. Um, oh, we have one right here in the front. 
and we don't have a microphone. <laughs> Sorry, my team didn't wake up. Whilst they're coming over, I'm gonna, we're going to get you a mic, Gerian, but I'm going to ask a question in, in the meantime. Um, last month, we had our conference. Yeah, right here, it's in the, the second row in the front. Put your hands up there, Gerian. It's coming to the left here. Um, but I'll ask a question so you can hold the mic after this. So last month, we had a conference in, in Detroit, and, and Monica, someone you know very well, Jeff Morrison, Senior Vice President, Global Purchasing and Supply Chain, um, he did send a pretty clear message, which we can share because it was very clear when we've read it several times, um, recognizing in Mexico that there are definitely new players, as you alluded to, Julia, and more competition, and that you know, a, a car maker like GM would expect its providers to show it the preference that he, he feels it deserves. Um, you know, and, and I think when, so in other words, you know, when it comes to the space and capacity, etc. Following on that, I just thought I'd ask you, how are you working with your partners here, imports, rail, etc., to, to maintain that preference? Because obviously it needs to go two ways, right? Um, do you, do you need to maintain being preferred, if that makes sense, as well as um, your partner showing the respect from that. So how are you doing it locally on the ground? Yeah. GM has been in, in Mexico uh, 89 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we are number one producer, number one exporter of, of vehicles, and, and that means uh, stability and continuity of our, our business. And this is basically what GM has been provided uh, to our suppliers. Uh, we are playing a long game, <laughs> so we have presence in, in, in ICE, uh, a hybrid and electric uh, vehicles. So we are facing this uh, fast changing market by designing, building and selling what our customers needs. Those uh, can give a certainty our uh, business to our business partners. And, and uh, for sure, um, that's uh, the, uh, a long game. So we have here, um, we have around 130 logistics suppliers. Uh, either directly or indirectly, and with some of them we have a really a long-term relationship for more than 20 years, <laughs> 30 years, so that, that means stability, and that's basically that, that we are providing to us. Uh, so we are here to, to play that long game, and, and certainly we want to have that preference, uh, uh, as we, we want to continue uh, being the, the preference customers of our business of our business partners. We rely in that partnership mm -hmm. and, and collaboration uh, within this uh, increased uh, competition. So the the relationship we have built during this this uh, uh, long time is uh, really uh, important for us, and that's why we continue to be the, the preferred customers of our uh, uh, business partners. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's an important point. I don't know if anyone else has any reflections on, on, on that thought in terms of maintaining yourself as a customer or a provider of, of choice, and, and what, what you, you know, you're considering it in this context. I mean, any time, do you want to add anything to that? No, 100% agree. I mean. Yeah. Uh, when you are focused on how I can be the best customer, mm. the things start to change. And we, mm -hmm. we have open ears. Uh, certainly, we are not the experts in everything, so we need to bring everybody together. And, and start to, if you are the expert on this, please let me know how can you do it differently, and we can create together what it is needed. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the spirit that, mm -hmm. that the industry is following right now. Yeah. Open ears, teams working together and they bring fantastic and brilliant solutions together. Yeah. So that's keep us uh, looking for a more years working together, more years working together. So mm -hmm. that, that's my point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. great. Well, maybe we can go yes. to, the, to the question that we had from the young man in the second row here. Perfect, um, thanks Chris. Uh, you stole my question or uh, you read my mind, something like that. That was going to be my question, how to become a customer of choice. There's I think a lot of competition between OEMs right now. So maybe I'll come up with another one. What is the one thing that a supplier can do to, to get your attention, right? You, are, you have established relationships, you talked 30 years with some of your suppliers. But as a new supplier, it's sometimes, I was on the procurement side as, at an OEM, can be very, very challenging to, to get traction, to gain attention. 
What is maybe one thing that, that gets your attention? You want to go first? Okay. Uh, I think uh, one of the suppliers uh, strategy or strategic supplier uh, and partnership, it is that, that, that we need to be open always looking for what is there, where new things that we can uh, do together. So, uh, responding to your, your question, uh, or answering your question, it is be wild. Be wild. Try to, to put how you are seeing the things, uh, offer what you are doing, and what we are not seeing there already. To have, uh, once again, all these options, mm -hmm. and, and us as a customer, always looking for what is the next? I think that's the step that I would like to see. In. You can do this if you change the way that you are doing this, and, and we can do that. From my point of view, that's something that we are thankful when we receive some wild options to doing something. <laughs> now go a bit wild. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, for, for us, uh, it's important to have um, a business relationship with a well-structured company that can bring stability to, to our business um, and, and that can have the, the service quality and the levels of, uh, that we require as, as GN so we can uh, achieve our, our, our goals. Uh, but also, um, when, we, when we said structured companies, because we are looking also for new ways of working together. So innovation, technology, something that they can offer that can improve our network design, the, the service levels uh, to our customers, and also, of course, that they can be, um, uh, that they can bring also profitability and rentability to, 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 to our business. So that, that's really, really important for, for us. We are always open to, to, to hear from our suppliers the, what, is happening in the market uh, to bring these kind of ideas. So we are eager to, 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 to find new ways of working together. So if the suppliers have that ideas, we are really open and eager to find that So because we, we want to focus on, on that. Thank you. Um, maybe, was there another question in the audience? Sorry, I, no, I didn't see a hand. We, we did talk a lot, we've just been talking about how to be a customer of choice and uh, understanding ways, better ways that providers could work with you or, or, or get your attention. Um, and maybe turning back to the providers, you know, what, what sort of, uh, what are you doing or what do you think you need to do to, to be the provider of choice mm -hmm. and, and therefore also, you know, therefore catch their attention? I'll start with you, Eric, and then go to Julie. Well, in, in our case, we, our, our, we don't have assets, no, in, yeah. because yeah. we are we are a logistics provider. So our our first our biggest asset is our people. So our invest we are investing a lot of in that. But at the other hand, when we when we chose to work with many many different carriers, it's the same that, that, that our partners looking. No, we are we're, we're looking companies with a well structured, uh, good service, but the most important commitment. You no, know? because um, sometimes we receive small companies but not a large structure, but a lot of commitment, a lot of energy. And we decided to work with them, and there are 100% goals, no? We, we found the goal there. In some cases, we receive big companies, no? They have a lot of traders, a lot of infrastructure, but they don't have the commitment. And this is a very particular sector. The automotive sector is completely different, no? They're, I don't want to talk about bad, uh, talk about bad, bad about other sectors, but the automotive sector is, is, is in my opinion, is the most structured sector mm. in the industry. Um, and it requires a lot of commitment, requires a lot of a compromise, and requires a lot of quality because any any change, any fail, uh, affect the entire network. You know? so that's that's our our our, um, our focus when we when we decided to work with with the partners there. You no, know? focus on that, in that commitment, in that compromise, and of course that quality. You know? Yeah. Anything you add, Julie? Yeah, and I think from a Jack Cooper Mexico perspective, um, the key is always listening. You know, understanding what is the customer's issue, you know, what service can you provide that's unique. And, you know, if you look at kind of the, the locations, we've gone from 3 to 11 and expanded a lot of different services just by listening and understanding kind of what their issues are. 
you know, maybe it's a government change and repuve process, you know, whatever it, it may be, but finding and bringing solutions to the table that make their jobs easier, I think is really the key. Mm. And we're coming, we're coming close to, to the end of the discussion here. Maybe one of the topic I thought I wanted to just pick up with you, Monica, you mentioned right in the beginning in your priorities, uh, clearly GM strategy to build zero emission vehicles, electric vehicles, and we see it clear in, in, in Mexico. Um, you have important EV assembly and production coming here. Um, are there things that your logistics partners can do to help with this transition more? Because, you know, we talked about it this morning. There are greater weights. There are requirements for charging. There's, there's a variety of things we need to keep in mind, along with, let's say, the um, challenges in the supply chain itself. Um, you know, what, what are things that you would like to see from your partners to help further in that transition? Well, um, we want to listen from, from them, uh, if, um, and, and that probably a message that I will send to, to, to our business partner and the suppliers here is that uh, we want open communication. Um, that's really important. If, if you are seeing innovation or best practices in the, in the, in the market, please bring those ideas to us. We are, we are eager to, to, to explore new ways of working uh, together. Uh, and we know that, that this uh, business uh, requires to, to, to invest and, and, and to stay in ahead of the, of the, of the game. And, uh, and we encourage uh, our suppliers to invest in, in new technologies, innovation, to improve the, the network design that, that we have and, 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 and the service we have. And we also um, encourage our suppliers to challenge uh, the way we are doing things. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really, really important because in that way we can improve the, the, the service levels and, and, and also the profitability uh, and um, also to, um, to encourage our suppliers the use of uh, cleaner technologies. So that's, mm -hmm. it, it is also, also important. That is also part of our uh, priorities. Mm -hmm. we, we want to change this, uh, this work and, and, and to uh, achieve the zero emissions uh, uh, target that, that we have. And, and so we, we want them to uh, be our partner in also in, in, in that matters. And, and we want them to be engaged to, to find new ways uh, and, and sustainable ways to, to work together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and maybe just, the, the, oh, well, there's a last question there we can maybe take from the audience. I'll take it to the floor. I would say the young man, but... <laughs> Not anymore, thanks. <laughs> Maybe when I started coming to these things. Uh, so Matt from uh, Norad up in Davisville. Um, you mentioned a lot about bringing ideas to the team that you, you guys lead, but with so much turnover um, within the ranks, and I think we're going to talk more about that this afternoon, but how do you recommend a supplier get to the right person? Because if you bring the right idea, but that person's, you know, in charge of truck away and not ports or whatever. Like, how do you get to the right person? It, is there a way you could start to share more information about who's in charge of what on a more timely basis? Yeah, the, 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 your immediate contact, that it could be the, the, the buyer, uh, that could be the right person to bring these kind of ideas. That, that, that is an immediate person. Uh, we are having this kind of a conversation within our teams and, and we are trying to review these kind of ideas that our suppliers are, are providing. We also have a, a system in which our suppliers can provide those ideas through GM. And that, uh, that system goes directly to our, uh, the, the, the specific department or the department that is in charge of uh, that specific suppliers. And that's basically that we are reviewing. If uh, you don't have an answer, I suggest that you can go to directly to the manager or to the director to review those, these kind of ideas. Uh, believe me that mm. we have this uh, uh, door open policy and we are always uh, uh, happy to listen to our suppliers, especially if they are bringing, uh, they are, uh, bringing to us these kind of ideas. And, and that kind of echoes that was going to be my last question to you, Diane, and because and, and, you used the word earlier that I like, co-creation, you know, and, and, and 
how are you trying to ensure more, more doors to open for the co-creation, more ensure that the ideas get to the right people, the space is created um, to hear, listen, and try? Um, maybe that, that could be following on from that, uh, from your side. What, what would your comments be? Um, I, I think when, when we are talking about try to co-create or solve whatever we want, it is to have this mindset of one team if we are looking as a one team together, uh, I think the beyond the win to win, it is happy to happy. So everybody's happy when, when we are doing the things. So we are very open, and I like what uh, you said about the listening. The listening is fundamental in order that we can uh, co-create better. Uh, and as well to have a purpose that it's not only the transaction, the transportation for A to B or whatever, it's the complete supply chain. And I think the, the final goal should be how we together create a experience, service or service experience for our customers. So customers in, in supply chains, everybody, it's a production plan, it is our, our team, it is everybody. So if we have this mindset that together we can create an experience for them, uh, that's like a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And we, we can there and we can feed back together because not all the ideas will be successful, but we learn from that. So I think that's a good mindset from Nissan and a regional and global perspective. Yeah. And, and maybe just for the providers to comment finally on that, are you, are you finding the right channels to share the ideas and to co-create um, with your customers and potential customers? Are there ways that that could, that that could be better facilitated, uh, Julie? Is this where I'm supposed to put a pitch in for your conference? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, took, you took the opening, actually. <laughs> no, but truly, I mean, yeah. the last couple of days, it has been great to connect with, with old friends and new, new customers and new partners. And yeah, I mean, we've, we've been in the industry in the U.S., as you said, for 100 years and here for a couple decades. So um, it is always evolving. I'll give a lot of credence to the turnover uh, comment. But I think um, a strong relationship can withstand a lot of things and networking, of course, which is what your forum is all about. Certainly. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. I wasn't actually trying to push it, but it is appreciated. But, uh, Eric. It's, it's the same. So we, we have a lot of experience with all the partners that we have in, in, the, in the industry. So we share information uh, uh, between uh, all the teams that we have working in every single uh, customer. And, and there are ideas that they are generating, like something Ford, that we apply in GM later, no? or yeah. Nissan, or, yeah. or BMW, or wherever. So it's, it's just to share information. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a really fan of, of, the, of the bike races. And there's a one company that they already won the last two years, every single race, which is Ducati. And they, are, they have eight, eight bikes in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in every single mm -hmm. race, and they share information. It doesn't matter if it's one team mm -hmm. running for the, for the house or another team running for another com a team. They share every single training, every single race, they share information. And that's the key, no? Yeah. Share information, mm -hmm. if I improve, you improve, no? And that's the key. And we don't have any problem to, to share with all the, yeah. all the partners. Yeah. Well, well, there I will use the opportunity to, to uh, stress that that is indeed one of the main reasons that we forums like this together, where we have platforms and uh, publications like that exactly to hopefully share the information that we can as best as we can to help you share even better. Um, so I really want to thank all of you for being open and, and opening up that platform further, making it clear uh, some opportunities to do that and, and being honest uh, with, with your partners here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much to all of you.